Uh, it was tough, very tough. Uh, it was, the fire was raging for, for several hours. There's a lot of folks without homes right now. One of the worst fires Cheney has ever seen. That's what city leaders are saying after flames destroyed the motel in Cheney, leaving some people living there now homeless. Plus, caught on camera, the dramatic video of an Alaska Airlines plane falling apart during takeoff. We have a cutoff low sitting overhead, and that means more chances of storms in the days to come, but also some cooler temps. Crim 2 News at 4 begins now with Whitney Ward and Jeremy Legu. Yeah, we got a knock on the door, like, you know, people screaming, hey, we're on fire. And I walked outside and I just saw the smoke billowing out, and then the flames came, like I said, about 15 minutes later. A big fire at a Cheney motel, sending residents fleeing from their rooms around midnight. By morning, that building was completely destroyed. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us here on Crem 2 News First at 4. I'm Whitney Ward. Crews put out that fire at the motel in Cheney earlier this morning, and thankfully everyone living there did make it out safely. Cheney city officials are calling this, though, the worst fire they've ever seen. That fire was at the downtown Cheney Motel. It started right around midnight and is now considered a total loss. And now some of the victims say they're starting from square one. Crem 2's Amanda Rowley talked with us now. She joins us live from Cheney. Amanda? Yeah, Whitney, in the middle of the night, the people living at this motel ran for their lives with only the clothes they had on their backs. Thankfully, though, everyone that lives there is OK. No one was injured, but now they're having to figure out how to move forward. Now, the Red Cross was on scene and connected with the people who are now displaced from their homes because of the fire. James Hainsley was uh, says the Red Cross gave him a $500 visa gift card, which was meant to cover a hotel room and food. Now James family lost everything in the fire, including their IDs and important documents. He says the apartment was a small home that gave their life some st stability. Now they have to start all over. Really sucks from, you know, everything just being gone and taken from us, you know, but we have our, our our lives, so you know that's you know, and we're able to eat now. We're you know we don't have to worry about what we're going to eat tonight, so we'll we'll probably manage. <laughs> Now, James doesn't have any family living in the area, but he told me they will be staying at a nearby motel tonight. We have not been able to confirm how many people have been displaced, but the Cheney City Administrator says the motel had at least seven units. Now, as for the traffic here out at Cheney today, the fire department has kept both lanes blocked for most of the day, but as you can see coming back out live here, they have opened up traffic heading out of Cheney leaving. So if you're traffic leaving downtown Cheney, that lane is open, but if you are coming into Cheney downtown area, that lane is still blocked. Reporting in Cheney tonight, Amanda Rowley, Prem 2 News. All right, Amanda, thank you very much. And Spokane firefighters saved a home from burning in the West Central neighborhood this morning. That house on West Broadway and North Cedar caught fire, but crews were able to get control of those flames before it did any major damage to that home. Lincoln County Sheriff's deputies arrested an escaped inmate from Davenport. Deputies say 37-year-old Cody Magruder was found just south of Davenport city limits, and a witness had spotted him walking along State Route 28, and then deputies found him hiding in some tall grass near the road. Magruder escaped last night from the Lincoln County Jail when he and a second inmate overtook a guard. The second inmate was detained before he was able to escape. Magruder was in custody on property crimes and an out-of-county warrant. Well, take a look at this, a terrifying moment for some passengers about to take off at SeaTac Airport yesterday. Right after an Alaska Airlines flight took off, the crew felt a quote, unusual vibration. So they turned around, they were able to land safely. But look at that. As they did, part of the engine cover was tearing right off the plane. Fortunately, everyone on board was fine. They were all put on another flight to San Diego, but wow, very scary.
Governor Brad Little is calling Idaho lawmakers back from holiday for a special session starting on September 1st. The governor wants to use the state's budget surplus for tax breaks and education funding. At a press conference today, Governor Little says the state needs to address what to do with the state's projected $2 billion surplus. Lawmakers will consider a draft of some proposed legislation that is proposing up to $500 million in tax rebates for people who live in Idaho. The bill will include tax rebates. Each taxpayer would get back about 10% of their 2020 income taxes that were paid with a minimum of $300 per person or $600 for a family or joint filers. Lawmakers will report to the Capitol for that special session on Thursday, September 1st at 8 a.m. It will likely take at least two days. All right, let's switch gears. Let's talk weather now. Chances of some afternoon thunderstorms here in part of the northwest, but it certainly turned into a beautiful sunshiny day here over Spokane. Our chief meteorologist Jeremy Legou outside enjoying the not so hot temperatures right now. I know, right? I'm out here in a coat. I don't know why I didn't take it off, but I'm here and it's not that bad. <laughs> However, if I look out to the west, there is an ominous looking cloud and that ominous looking cloud pops up on radar and with temperatures climbing into the upper 80s or even 90 in Coeur d'Alene, that gives those storms fuel or energy. You can see most of them staying off to the north with our cutoff low in southern British Columbia. But watch what happens as we zoom in. A storm just off to the west of Spokane continues to make its way in, starting to close in on Medical Lake with some heavy rain, some locally gusty wind and a little bit of lightning. And that's kind of the story as these storms pop up. Notice how slow they are moving. This is about the past hour. And in the past hour, these storms really don't go far. And that's because we don't have much steering motion in the atmosphere. So expect the storms to just kind of hang out this evening and eventually dissipate overnight. And then tomorrow, more widespread with the storms as that cutoff low moves down into the inland northwest, basically. Temperatures start out near 60 tomorrow morning. And by tomorrow afternoon, we soar back up to near 90 across the region. All right, Jeremy, thank you very much. Spokane's population continuing to grow and city officials want housing options to do the same. Back in July, City Council passed an ordinance that allows for the development of more multifamily homes in Spokane, like duplexes and triplexes. And now city planners are looking for the contractors and the developers and property owners to build that type of housing. Krem 2's Janelle Finch is joining us here in the studio now to break down more of what the city has in mind and what property developers think of the city's timeline. Hi, Janelle. City leaders have deemed our housing supply an emergency crisis. Through this council approved ordinance, city planners have created the Building Opportunity and Choices for All pilot program. Over the next year, the city hopes to expand its duplex, triplex, fourplex, and townhouse supply. But one person I spoke to with a background in architecture says he's skeptical builders will be able to meet this one year timeline. Project approval begins this Saturday, August 27th, but city planners say applications are open now and they've already had pre-development meetings with people who want to build multifamily homes. The city hosted an open house at the Central Library for people wanting to learn more about the housing program. In the audience were realtors, architects, and prospective property owners. But when considering the project's one-year timeline, some people in the audience raised an eyebrow to how possible it would be to actually see builds within the year. At the architecture firm that I work at, almost every project we work on is, was in the works for at least two years, sometimes five years. Some of them have been in the works for over 10 years. And so to get something turned around in a year is pretty tricky. That's, that's a tall order. And so everyone that was sitting there kind of spoke to that. They're like, hey, how is this going to work? Is there going to be streamlined uh, approval processes to, to help get a bigger window? City Planning Director Spencer Gardner says over this next year, there might not be a lot of shovels going into the ground, but one of the goals of the program is to lay down the foundation towards more permanent housing codes that include multifamily options. The city says there's potential to extend the program an additional year, but for now, the program is set to expire July 2023. The city is hosting two more open house meetings, one tomorrow evening at The Hive and Thursday evening over Zoom. In the studio, Janelle Finch, Crem2 News.